So this question looks like it's going to just be a simplified question because it's short, but let's read it and see exactly which direction we should go. So the question says, which of the following expressions is a factor, okay, a factor of x cubed minus 64? All right, so if I were, if I'm looking to factor something, there's only a very short list of tools that I have to factor. First and foremost, I'd be looking for a GCF. There is not a GCF here. Second of all, maybe I'd be looking to see, well, is this the difference of two squares, right? Difference of squares. And there's definitely a difference, but I have a cubed here, not square, so that's not happening. Um, obviously, we think about trinomial factoring, right? Maybe like that with FOIL or reverse FOIL. Um, this is only two terms. It's a binomial, so it's not a trinomial, so we can't use any of those methods for factoring this. And then there's also this uh, sum or difference of cubes, which this is, right? So I do have a cubed here. Well, is 64 a cube? Well, actually, it is, right? 64 is the same as 4 cubed, so I could rewrite this as x cubed minus 4 cubed. And then I'd have to get into my, my memory of how to break down or how to factor the difference of cubes. If you know how to do that, then that's great. I'm not going to go down that route because I want to show you a different way to answer this question. So this word factor is a very uh, uh, dynamic word. So factoring, we know, just means we take something complex, we break it into simpler, into simpler forms. But there is kind of a workaround um, that usually you learn in 11th grade, some of you maybe 10th grade, some of you maybe you know, senior or 12th grade if you're, if you're taking math, and that is finding the zeros. When you find the zeros of, of something, you're basically figuring out what number, if plugged into the polynomial, would make the polynomial equal to zero. And usually, no matter if it's in its factored form or non-factored form, that number is very telling of what the factored form would be, right, if it's not already in factored form. Now, how is that useful for you? So this is how it's useful. When I look at choice A, what is the x value that makes choice A equal to 0? Well, it would be x equals 4. Now, I can test this because if when I plug 4 into the unfactored polynomial, or binomial in this case, if that also gives me zero, then I can pretty, I can be pretty confident that x minus four is a factor, right? So let's try it out. When I put four, so I have x cubed minus 64, again, I want it to be zero. When I put four in for this x, I get four cubed minus 64 equals zero, which is in fact 64 minus 64, which does equal zero which makes me think that choice A must be the right answer. Now, when I do the same thing for B, I'd get x equals negative 4. And for us, if I plugged negative 4 in here, I'd get a negative 64. And that is not equal 0. For C, so B is gone. For C, I'd get x equals negative 64. Again, putting negative 64 and cubing it and minus 64, that's also not going to give me a zero, so C is out. For D, um, D, I'd have x squared plus 16 equals zero, which turns into x squared equals negative 16, which means I'm going to square root this, which means I'm going to get x equals plus or minus 4i. It's going to be imaginary, so that's also not what I'm going to want to use here. And uh, just for the sake of time, the same thing will happen with E there isn't a, a value that comes out of factoring E, right? Setting x squared minus 4x plus 16 equal to 0 that can then also be plugged into this x here and make that original binomial equal 0. So all that to say that when you're finding a factor, it's easier to look for the zeros, okay? Unless you know how to do the factoring. Right? If the factoring is easy for you, then you would go straight here to difference of cubes. You'd figure that out from here, and you'd be, you'd be right where you want to be. All right.